Tap Tempo VC LFO. It's a 12 HP wired Eurac format low frequency oscillator module. It's available with either a black or a silver front panel. It has low power needs of 35 milliamps on the positive rail and 25 milliamps on the negative rail. It's only 26 millimeters deep, so it's suitable for shallow, skiff style cases. It's a very fully featured voltage controlled LFO with a tap tempo function. The range is from 0.05 Hz, that's one cycle every 20 seconds, to 50 Hz. There's 16 different wave shapes, including a stepped random wave and random sloping waves. A unique wave twist function allows us to change the duty cycle of all of the waveforms. It has a multiply function, and with this we can double, treble, quadruple or even half the LFO rate so that we can vary the frequency, but still keep it relative to the tempo of the track. It can be clocked externally, and also as a clock output. It has both bipolar and unipolar outputs, which are available simultaneously. A built-in VCA that controls the level of both outputs. And voltage control of all functions is possible, including LFO frequency. This is the module, and by looking at the profile, we can see it's very shallow, so it's good for skiff cases. Then on the back, this is the 10-pin power connector, and the bottom two pins are for the minus 12 volt, which is normally red stripe on the bottom of the power cable. The module has a total of 16 waveforms, split into two banks of eight. Bank one contains mostly familiar waveforms like sawtooth, ramp, pulse, triangle, etc. But bank two contains more unusual waves. There's also a waveform twist control, which changes the pulse wave of each individual waveform. The wave twist function varies the duty cycle of a selected waveform with the exception of the stepped random voltages, which is the last waveform on bank one. It's like having square wave pulse width modulation available to 15 of the 16 waveforms. Waveform 8 is a random step voltage which is similar to sample and hold. Whereas on bank 2, this changes to a random slope waveform where the random voltages are connected to each other with a slope and the bigger the difference between voltages, the more steep the slope will be. So if you look on the scope at the moment, the interval between the points is the same, it's just that the speed in which it rises or falls to get to the new voltage is just different. If we go back to the sample and hold, the frequency determines the amount of time that it holds each new voltage.
whereas on the sloped round voltage, it determines the amount of time that it will take to get to each voltage, and then immediately it gets there, it will then generate another random voltage, and then move directly to that. And the wave twist function will also have some effect on this. The bank two waveforms are probably best described by the icons on the front panel, which are highlighted in white. And these are also affected by the, the waveform twist function. If an external CV is patched into the wave input, then the front panel switch is bypassed and a CV between 0 and plus 5 volts will select the waveform shape. So if I take the gate signal from the RVG to trigger the, the clock of the LFO and then take a random voltage to select the waveform. When the bank toggle switch is in the up position, you can also see here marks external CV, which also allows you to choose between the two banks. So if I put another random voltage into the bank input, it will now allow me to randomly choose between all 16 different waveforms. And of course, wave twist will still work. The twist function can also be controlled by patching a CV between 0 to plus 5 volts into the twist input. The multiply control allows us to double, treble, quadruple or half the LFO rate, so we can vary the LFO rate but still keep it relative to the tempo of the track. It also extends the range of the LFO and works in conjunction with the tap tempo button, allowing tempos to be created that are too fast to be tapped by hand. Currently I have the multiply set to 1, but as I turn it through 1.5 to 2, you'll see how it doubles the tempo of the LFO. And then to three, it triples the tempo. 
and into four quadruples of tempo. And then down to 0 0.5 or half. And by tapping the tap tempo button twice, I can set the tempo. This can also be controlled by patching an external CV of 0 to plus 5 volts or more to the malt input. Pressing the tap tempo button twice sets the LFO speed. If I wanted to set a very fast speed, one which I couldn't tap fast enough, then I can use a multiply control. It's a quadruple the speed. The clock in can also be used as an external tap control. Just by sending two pulses from a keyboard or a trigger or even another module will set the LFO rate. With a short gap between pulses producing a fast rate and a longer gap between pulses producing a slow LFO rate. In addition to controlling the clock speed, the frequency can also be controlled by CV. This allows it to be used as voltage controlled LFO. So instead of sending it gate signals or a trigger of some kind, you're actually sending it a CV value between 0 to plus 5 volts or above. This will be useful for using with something like a sample and hold module or another LFO or even an envelope generator or even a CV from a keyboard or a sequencer. In addition to having a more familiar bipolar CV output from the LFO module, where a signal between minus 5 and plus 5 volts is sent, it also has a unipolar output, which sends a signal between 0 volts and plus 10 volts. The yellow line on the scope represents 0 volts, and the blue line represents a sawtooth waveform coming from the bipolar output. It's rising to plus 5 volts and then descending to minus 5 volts. Currently it's modulating filter frequency, but if I add the unipolar output, the waveform is starting from 0 volts and then rising to plus 10 volts. Now you can hear its effect on the VCA. A unipolar output would normally be what you'd expect from something like an envelope generator, so here the LFO is, is just serving as a very rudimentary envelope. And if I change the waveform, See that the waveform from both outputs is exactly the same, it's just that the voltage range they're covering is different. The blue being the bipolar output covering from minus 5 to plus 5 volts, and then the yellow being the unipolar covering from 0 volts up to plus 10 volts. And the same is true on the second bank. Here I've got a sequencer running and I've got the gate output triggering the clock in the LFO module. The level control serves as an attenuator for the output of the module, but it's actually a VCA, which means it can be voltage controlled. This makes it possible to have CV control over the level of the modulation, and so it can be used with functions such as aftertouch from a keyboard or physical modulation controllers where the amount of, say, vibrato to pitch can be controlled manually as and when needed. The clock output can be used to control the tempo of sequences or other LFOs, or sample and hold, or even something like the dual RVG. Here I've got it triggering a sequencer. So as I increase the frequency, it will increase the speed of the sequencer. 
and it's also still affected by the multiply function. So if I increase the multiplication to 2, then that will double the speed of the sequence. It can also be used as a clock divider because it can divide by 2. I'll take it to 0 0.5. And a multiplier because it can multiply by 2, 3 or 4. This will also work with non-regular clocks, so for example you could use it to divide or multiply the time vary clock on the dual RVG module. And of course multiply can be controlled by an external CV, meaning that the function can be automated. Yes. <laughs> 
Thank <laughs> you. 